Hi, welcome to Indie Insights. I'm your host, Dirk Norris, and while Alex and Lauren are changing reels, um, we're going to be talking with another New Mexico independent filmmaker here, uh, and your writer, director, uh, Michael Perez. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, so we're, we're talking a little bit um, about older movies, newer movies, um, uh, black and white versus color, um, uh, Ed Wood versus good movies. <laughs> um, <laughs> So we were talking earlier, and, and you had some comments about Ed Wood and, and kind of his his style of doing things. Yeah, I, I, I really, you know, as crazy and as bad as his movies can be, I have a lot of respect for Ed Wood because he didn't conform to anybody's rules. He wanted to do what he wanted to do and make films how he wanted to make it. It was art to him. It was how he spoke. It's, it was his life. And, uh, and people respect him. He has a lot of cult followers. People talk still to this day, talk about him. And I think that's a, a passion that should be carried over into modern filmmakers. You know, a lot of times where, you know, Hollywood standards is something you hear about. And I think with independent filmmakers is we get to step outside of the box. We get to do what we want to do. And it always, it doesn't always conform to what other people want. And, and that way we get so many beautiful experimental movies, that, you know, so many different ways to tell stories. And I, and I love that. Films are entertainment. And... I like that, and I thought Ed Wood did a great job at doing that. I, I, I think um, if you're going to be in this business, especially if you're an independent filmmaker, you have to have the passion for it, otherwise you're not going to last very long. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Passion is huge in indie filmmaking. I mean, we are, we're working on a tight budget, we're working on um, uh, limited resources, so passion is, is, the, is the key resource in filmmaking, independent filmmaking, and you know. Yeah, and um, some of the films, well, uh, the films of, of yesteryear, um, they didn't have to worry about uh, finding money. Um, coming out of the studios, they're um, financed. Um, you as an independent filmmaker have to do crowdfunding or um, schlepping or, you know, whatever it is you have to do to get the money for your film. Your film, Big Mistake, you did for on a budget of $15,000? Yeah, we shot it for $15,000, and, and you mentioned that uh, one of my biggest influences, and it is a noir film, and the noir genre was a huge influ influence to me because those were films made during an era where Hollywood and, and they didn't have money, so they had to make creative stories on a low budget. You know, creative lighting—it's all about the story, and that really inspired me as a filmmaker. Um, and I think, you know, it, it was a major inspiration for me and the film. Is, is there a particular style um, you shoot in? Is there? A, uh, are you are you after a particular look with your film? Um, no, I mean, like, I, I, I love all different looks of different films. I mean, um, I think what fits the story is best for the look of the film. I mean, I'm very heavily influenced by people like Christopher Nolan and Quentin Tarantino and Martin Scorsese, um, Alfred Hitchcock, you know, I mean, all through the spectrum of filmmakers. Um, so I, I feel... Um, your style should match what you feel is right for the story. Mm -hmm. So I, well, I might have my own style. My style might differ from another director's completely, but I'm happy with that. And if I entertain my audience, that's all I care about. That's what matters to me. Um, but you'd like a little return on your investment as oh, well. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make money so you can continue to make movies. <laughs> right. right. Otherwise, you're set with this couch and this chair for you know pretty right. much the rest of your life. Right. right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but. Uh, I, I'd love to, um, not necessarily, um, I take influence from them, but I want to be my own director. I want to uh, tell my stories my way. And I hope that people like it enough that I can make money and to continue to make more films, because that's ultimately what we want to do. Right, right. Yeah, I, I think it gets in your DNA. You're a filmmaker, and that's, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you came up from Las Cruces. You, you grew up in Las Cruces? Yes, uh, born in El Paso, raised in Las Cruces, mm -hmm. uh, did the military for a couple of years, and then when I got out, I just couldn't leave New Mexico, and I came up here to Albuquerque. Oh, that's right. You're a squid, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seven years. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm uh, Coast Guard days oh, myself. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coast East. Right. Um, uh, how would you characterize uh, briefly the um, kind of the independent scene um, here in Albuquerque now? Oh, I love it. It's so it's so broad. There's so many filmmakers. I'm always like uh, being told, "Have you met this person?" I'm like, "No, I haven't. I'd love to meet them." You know, because there's so many passionate people who have their own passionate style. I love like the 48s. There's 
dozens and dozens of film teams and all these people want to work with each other and I think it's great you see different filmmakers with different styles and it's 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 wonderful the right. passion in this in this town is amazing it's terrific um, well I, I thank you so much Michael for um, being on the show today um, you've been listening to Indie Insight and um, we're gonna be back next week with another guest um, I think Lauren and Alex have got things all straightened out so back to the movie <laughs> And now more Plan 9 from Outer Space. We'll be back with more Plan 9 from Outer Space. So, the answer to which of these celebrities does not own a home in New Mexico? The answer is D, Bruce Willis. More Plan 9. More Plan 9. Yes. Things are certainly bizarre around here these days. I just hope there's not any commercials. Its intensity may be more than some wish to be exposed to. Well, humanity lives to fight another day. This time, what did we learn from this? Alex, what's your takeaway? My takeaway for this film is that if you have all of the power, all of the weapons in the world to destroy the human race, if you've created atom bombs and other weapons of mass destruction, go at them with a very complicated plan about raising the dead. It's better. My takeaway is, um, uh, I don't know. There's not much to take away from this film. From Pulp Film Lab, oh, oh, oh boy, they're here. I'm Lauren Poole. And I'm Alex Knight. Stay safe, America. Until next time.